if you decided to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears, that you experience the fear, as one book says, feel the fear and do it anyway, what would your life be like? And I'm saying to you that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves. What's one of the ways to get started? Some of us need somebody to hold our hands. Sometimes we need somebody to help us out. Be willing to say, I don't know. Be willing to reach out. Be willing to get some assistance to take you to the next level. Of what great athlete, you never expect boxers to make profound statements. I think it was Joe Frazier who said this one. He says, all of us are like the blind man at some point in our lives standing on the corner waiting for somebody to lead us across. So all of us at some point in our lives need some help, need someone to reach out to us, to pull out the lifeline, to help us go across some treacherous waters that we couldn't navigate by ourselves. None of us do it by ourselves. All of us at some point in our lives, we need that kind of help. We need that kind of assistance because we grow from the people we have in our lives that can enrich our lives personally, professionally, spiritually, and all the dimensions of our lives. We don't grow in a vacuum. You just can't turn on passion. You can't just turn on the desire to execute a task. Look at yourself. Look at yourself and remind yourself why. Why you are doing what you are doing. Remind yourself that this struggle, this temporary pain, this fight, this fight that you're in, this is what will make you stronger and faster and smarter and better. The elite performers look at time and use time completely differently than the people who perform at an average level. People who win, who max out, they are in a much bigger hurry than the people who are average. And I'm not kidding you when I say this. They're in a bigger hurry to get to their destination, to get to their outcome. Their pace is faster, they walk faster, they talk faster, and their expectation when they're gonna arrive at their destination is sooner. This may seem like a very small, subtle thing, but I want you to evaluate how big of a hurry are you in? Because there's something to be said about how close you think you are to a goal and how fast you will run to get to the finish line. The people that win in life don't necessarily have more vision than you. See, it's not a lack of vision always that means that you are going to lose. It's a lack of a type of vision, which is depth perception. You think you're further away from the outcome, and so you pace yourself like it, and you jog all the time throughout your life. The people that win, they have a bigger vision, but they have accurate depth perception. They understand how close their goals are, how close their outcome is, and they're constantly in a sprint to get there throughout their day. That means, consequently, they get started earlier and they finish later. They get up earlier. Throughout the day, they're in a bigger hurry to get to the places they need to be because the finish line in their mind is so much closer. I cannot emphasize this enough to you, is just the pace and the way time shrinks for elite performers compared to the average. You don't achieve worthwhile goals quickly or easily. They take time. They take struggle. They take relentless pursuit day in and day out. That's what it takes. But also, things don't usually fall apart quickly either. At least at first, it, it's, it's a slow process. A little slip here, a little setback over there, a little wearing down of discipline and will over time. So that's the thing. Success and failure are generally slow processes. Either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. 